Hi, I'm Josh Vogel, uh, filming issue seven of the SWAT Report video log. Um, I got an interesting question today. Not really a question so much as um, I was talking to somebody on Reddit who um, took my advice in a couple weeks ago about uh, finding one move from every position. And we started talking about um, how sometimes uh, it's hard to deal with getting tapped. You get caught by somebody, um, and like it could be somebody less experienced than you. You've been training for a while, and somebody of a lower belt or somebody um, with like a few days experience catches you, and you get kind of disappointed in yourself, uh, kind of bummed out, and sometimes have a hard time uh, coping with that. And so this is something that um, I think everybody deals with. I mean, people say in jiu-jitsu that you're not supposed to have ego and, you know, this is, this is uh, I guess, an aspect of ego, but I don't, I don't think that's true. I think in jiu-jitsu it's not about, you don't really get rid of your ego. I think you just learn how to both channel your ego into a useful form and then also um, how to maybe tone down some of the more harmful parts of ego and, and harness some of the more useful parts of ego. So for me, for me when this happens, there's, there's two things that, that kind of help, um, help me deal with this. One, the first thing is that um, I try to use it to make me better. So, yo bud, how you doing? Good. Um, I try to, uh, when I get caught in something I shouldn't get caught in and I'm, I'm up at night and I'm thinking and I'm losing sleep and I'm thinking to myself, man, why did that happen? Why did I get caught? Why did I get swept? Why did I get submitted? My guard pass, whatever. Um, I try to use that energy to, to make myself train harder and find an answer and go in the next day and solve that problem. Um, so if I roll with somebody who, I don't know, maybe they sweet me or, or something like that, um, and it, this happens a lot for me in tournaments. Like if I get caught in something in a tournament that I feel like I shouldn't have gotten caught in, it'll bother me for a couple of days. And I'll use that when I go into the gym next time, I'll drill the hell out of that position and I'll try and find people that are good at that position and put myself there and just keep on doing it, doing it, doing it until... Um, until I can deal with that position. So that's one way to deal with it, is to, is to take that, that feeling of, um, of being disappointed or bothered or, or upset and channel that into working harder and finding a solution for the problem. Uh, the second thing that I do is I try to, to I try to practice having a mentality of... Um, looking at jiu-jitsu as a problem-solving exercise. So I try to make it like a, a clinical thing where I try something, it doesn't work. Um, I go back to the drawing board and I look at it as like a failed experiment that, you know, I had an idea and my idea was my technique and my technique failed at this point and I try to troubleshoot it and go back to the drawing board and improve it and make my 2.0 version of the technique better and, uh, and improve from there. Um, and so thinking about it in a more clinical, uh, problem solving way, trying to remove the emotions from it and just thinking of it that way really, really helps me a lot deal with some of the ego stuff that comes up with, with losing a match that I feel like I shouldn't have lost or, you know, getting caught and, and being disappointed in myself. Um, and it's not, it's not like you can just decide, at least for me, I, I, I can't just decide one day like, okay, I'm not gonna let this bother me anymore. Um, just like practicing arm bars, this clinical mentality is something that I had to practice a lot and I'm still practicing it because uh, there'll be, I'll go a period of time where my training is good and I won't get caught in something and then, you know, all of a sudden I'll, I'll get caught in something and it'll bother me and I'll forget and I'll be like, damn man, I can't believe I can't believe I got caught in that arm bar. I can't believe I got my back taken. Uh, and then I have to go back to practicing that mentality of, okay, this is a problem solving exercise. 
I tried my move. I got caught in an arm bar. There's the problem. How did this happen? They got left hand cross grip on my left sleeve. Right hand controlled my elbow. They arm dragged. I couldn't get my arm back, and that's why I got caught in the arm bar. Um, and so breaking it down and practicing thinking about it in a clinical way really, really helps me a lot. Um, this isn't so much advice f for white belts. I mean, it is, but it's also advice for everybody, I think. Um, these are just a couple things that helped me a lot. But, you know, if you're a white belt, what you can expect is when you start training, um, you're going to get caught by people that just started and you're going to catch people that are more experienced than you and you're going to catch and get caught by your peers and and it's it's your the thing about jiu-jitsu is that you're always part of the food chain um if you get to the top of the food chain then you really really need to either find ways to get back in the food chain by uh, limiting your training, maybe roll with one arm or set a certain goal for yourself or whatever. Um, or you need to find, well, and you need to find people that will put you in your place and catch you and submit you because that's how you're going to get better. So it's a double-edged sword. You might feel like shit by getting caught by somebody who's got less experience than you or getting caught by somebody that you really don't want to tap to. Uh, but it's also good for you because they sort of do you a favor by exposing flaws in your technique. So that's kind of part of the clinical mentality that I was talking about is that also, you know, in addition to just looking at it as a pure problem solving exercise, um, sort of learning how to practice being grateful for people catching you. Um, I don't think I'll ever want people to tap me. Uh, it's just not part of my nature. I don't like it and I don't want it to happen, but um, when people do, I practice acting like they did me a favor by finding a flaw in my technique that needs to be fixed. So this, this, makes it, this takes it from something that'll keep me up at night to something that stings a little bit and makes me work harder. So that's kind of, the mentality takes the edge off of it for me and makes it more productive than destructive. I, hopefully that makes sense. Um, I'm not a psychologist or anything like that. Um, I have friends that are in sports psychology and they, they would probably give you better advice, but uh, these are just some of the mental tricks that help me in dealing with, um, you know, those feelings of, of you know, getting caught um, by somebody. Uh, so, so in a nutshell, two strategies. One, um, Practice having a clinical attitude towards jiu-jitsu. If somebody catches you, they did you a favor because they exposed a flaw in your technique, and that's something that you can work on to fix. And two, if it bothers you, channel that into something productive. It bothers you, use that to study footage, use that energy to go into the gym the next day and drill harder and train more and do the things that you need to do to solve that problem. Um, and, and that's a way to productively use your ego, and that's how ego can be a good thing in jiu-jitsu. I uh, hope that helps. Thanks. Bye.